don't niche yourself, but do niche your offers. So let's talk about this. What does this mean? And my, why might you want to follow this strategy as well? So first of all, a lot of us who are heart-based solopreneurs, we might be interested in many different things. Naturally, you probably have gotten trainings in this modality and that process and this particular framework. And so you would like to offer these different ways of healing or transformation or support to your clients, to your audience. And yet you come across marketing advice that says, no, 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 no. You have to niche yourself into this tiny box that constrains your unlimited potential. You've got to say that you help this particular type of person with this particular problem or small set of problems using this particular method. And that's supposedly the best marketing you can do because then people will remember you. They'll have a place for you in their head and they'll be able to easily talk about your work to other people. You ever heard that before? Well, uh, that advice has never sat well with me. I have always rebelled against it. Generally, I'm a, I like being a rebel uh, with a cause. <laughs> and so I never niched myself. I never niched myself. Meaning, look at what I look at the stuff that I offer. I mean, look at the, the courses that I teach. I started uh, 14 years ago teaching LinkedIn. Did you know that? That was my first course how to use LinkedIn for your business 14 years ago. And then someone said, well, George, you, you seem pretty good at Facebook too. Maybe you could teach that. I said, oh, okay, great. So I taught how to use Facebook for your business. It's a different niche, it really is. It's people are specialists in LinkedIn, specialists in Facebook marketing, specialists in TikTok or whatever. And then someone said, George, you, you seem really good at teaching webinars. Could you teach us about that? I said, okay, different niche, but all right, I'll teach how to teach webinars. <laughs> so I did that for a while. And then someone said, George, you seem really good at collaborating with other people, doing joint ventures. Could you tell us how you do that? So I, I created a whole program on how to do joint ventures and, and on and on and on. More recently, I got real excited by the AI revolution. So I said, this is important and I'm going to teach some courses on it because I'm learning myself and I want to share what I learned with others. I mean, look at this image behind me is I generated this on AI with just a few minutes. I'm not an artist and you may or may not call this art, but it's pretty. And uh, anyway, so I'm teaching AI courses now. I also wrote a couple books and someone said, please show us how you do that. So I taught a course on book publishing, which... Some people, that's their entire career is teaching or doing book publishing and teaching others how to do book self-publishing. I am in multiple niches and I haven't even named the other five to, to seven uh, niches that I dabble in. I have a spirituality program. You know, I have a content creation program. You know, I, so I've always resisted niching. And more recently I realized, okay, what I'm doing is even though I rebel against the advice of niching oneself, like one's business has to be about this and just this and focus, stay in your own lane, all that stuff. I said, okay, I, I don't do that. But what I do is each of my offers is more specific. That's why I mean by don't niche yourself, but do niche your offers. By offers, I mean each service you provide, each course that you teach, each webinar that you present, each event that you host. Those can be niched. I could next week host a webinar for dog owners on how to train your dog with love. I could do that. I've been doing that. I've been, I'm pretty good at dog training, actually. So I could do that. 
you know? Um, I'm, I, like I said, I'm right now, I'm teaching an, an, an art class. I'm not an artist. I don't niche myself that way, but I teach an art class. I do, and it's quite successful. People who are taking my art class love it because I use AI to, 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 to do the art and I teach them how to use the AI. I'm an art teacher now. I'm an art, and not only that, I have a face, private Facebook group where much of the activity these days is the AI art. So I am an AI art teacher and community facilitator, not a business coach or whatever it is that I call myself. I just never changed my title from, from 10, 12 years ago when I came up with authentic business coach or it was 10, about, about 10 years ago, I did nine, nine or 10 years, nine years ago, just never changed it. Even though I don't do, I, I'm not a coach anymore. My title is still authentic business coach, but I'm not a coach anymore. I just haven't bothered to change the title. I don't care what you call me. <laughs> some people call me, interestingly, some people call me a Facebook ads expert because that's been the class I've taught very focused for several years. And some people, that's all they engage with, with my services is to learn Facebook, Instagram ads. And I'm quite good at it. And my and then some people just say, oh yeah, you, you're an ad expert. I'm like, okay, you can call me whatever you want. That's fine. And so, and, and so you might say, well, you know, doesn't that that take away from from your marketing and from your memorability and all that stuff? I said, no, why why does it take away? Because the people who have taken learned Facebook ads from me and implemented the advice and did well, they just it made a deep impact on them and that's what they think of. The people taking my AI art class now think of me as an AI art expert and and teacher and that's what they're going to remember me for and that's what they're telling their friends that I do. People who are who took my blog to book course, they published their book or several books, and they're thrilled by it. And they they that's what they tell their friends. Oh, George does this book class. That's what they tell their friends about me, and that's what they that's how they see me. I allow you. So so and and here's the thing: if you see offer, if you see offers from me, because I promote, you know, I generally promote uh, at least one or two offers per month. Um, you know, one or two different things per month, you probably just scrolled by the ones that weren't relevant for you, right? I mean, can you name all of my offers? <laughs> I have 20 online courses right now and three group programs running right now. Can you name even half of them? I, I, I couldn't even name them. <laughs> no, you couldn't because you just scroll past. When I say scroll past, I mean on social media, but also on your email newsletter, you just scroll past the ones that aren't relevant for you. And then when, when, I, when I offer something that you are thinking about and you're trying to learn or get better at it, then you stop and you look at it and you consider it, that's it. And then the ones that you aren't, you just scroll past it. So I, I'm not afraid that I offer a bunch of stuff that isn't relevant for you. And is it somehow cluttering your mind that don't know how to think of me? No, I don't. No, you're just going to think of me from whatever I made the deepest impact on you. That's how you'll remember me, right? That's all you remember. And then you'll scroll past the other stuff. This is what people don't tell you about niching. It's like you don't have to niche yourself. Niche your offers. Stay flexible. Offer whatever you want. Whatever you genuinely believe you can add value to other people and that you're energized by and you feel like you can be excellent at it, why wouldn't you offer it? It's, it's, like, it's like a musician who says, okay, uh, uh, I'm going to only sing this one song because that's one song people like from me. No. Or the musician who says, oh, I'm only going to do this one genre because I'm supposed to niche myself and, and only going to do this one uh, genre of music. I'm going to do, only do jazz or only do hip hop or only do folk or only do whatever, you know, electronica. I mean, I don't, whatever, this is like, but even though they want to dabble in these other ways, why are you limiting them? You wouldn't limit a, 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 an artist or musician, would you? No, L please do dabble and please show us what you've got. And the ones we don't like, we'll scroll past it. We'll, we'll listen to for five seconds. God, not my style. Keep going. And then when they pr produce a, a piece of music that is your style, you're like, oh, I want to hear that one. Oh, I want to see that art. Or, and then you, you're mesmerized by it. And that's what you share forward. Why, why couldn't you be like that? Why do you have to niche yourself? I don't get it.
I, I mean, I've been this, around this for 14 years. I've been in, inquiring with this question for 14 years, and I still don't get it. Someone please advise me. Someone please advise me why I should niche myself or at anybody should niche themselves, especially in our world today where the search engines, you might say, well, it's good for SEO, George. If a website is niched, then it's better for search. Really? Is that, is that how search engines work anymore? No, no. As far as I understand, and I, I know SEO better than most people, I think. Search engines, they give you the pages that relate to your search, especially now going forward with AI, it's even going to be even more uh, tailored and specific to what the searcher is looking for, regardless of what that website also has. Website has all the other stuff. It, the search, the search bots are, are getting just smarter and smarter by the year. They're not going to be stupid enough to go, well, this website, uh, we're so confused. This website has 15 different niches, so we don't know what to do. They're not like that. They're like, oh, okay, people are looking for, the, for niche number 15. Well, this website has 15 niches, but they do talk about niche 15, so we're going to surface those results. And that's what they do. And that's also, by the way, what humans do. <laughs> This is idea that a human being is, well, I'm so confused. You, you told me two things and I, I'm not going to remember you anymore. That doesn't work like that. This is, you, you told me 15 things, but I, I only understood number three. So I'm going to remember you for number three. Great. Wonderful. And you're going to keep seeing me for all 15 things or all 25 things. And you'll just keep remembering me for number three. Cool. Great. And at some point, you'll get interested in my niche number four and number eight because you didn't know you were interested in it, but you, I kept posting about it. So now you're like, oh, what's that about? Oh, interesting. I was only interested in your thing number three, but now I'm also interested in your thing number eight because you kept posting about it. So whatever it is that energizes you, the vast majority, the vast variety of things that energize you, post about them, make offers about them. I'm not saying you should do it for all of them. If you have 25 different passions and interests, you don't have to literally go through each of the 25. Like you just, you know, keep, keep on like one, one a week. And then that's like, I only get to touch in on one of my 25 things twice a year. You don't have to do that. You go with what energizes you now. And by the way, what energizes you now is probably connected, very likely connected to what energizes your audience to. See, this is the, sorry. I think this is the genius of my system. <laughs> obviously, I praise myself too much. No, um, obviously, I, I follow my own system. That's why I talk about it. That's why I use it. But it's we tend to gravitate towards the parts of our passions, the aspects of our interests that also interest our audience because we post about these different things. And, oh, people ignore me when I talk about thing number two and thing number seven. But my goodness, they're, they're, they're saying stuff when I post about number, th number three and number eight. Well, you're naturally energized when people respond to you. And so you're naturally going to gravitate towards posting more about those things that people respond to. And you're going to make your different offers. And, oh, no one, nobody bought thing number five. Oh, my God, look how many people bought thing number nine. Well, of course, you're going to gravitate towards offering thing number nine more often or a, a different flavor of thing number nine. Do you see what I mean? Because this all works out if you're willing to be like an artist or musician and say, I'm going to just put out 25 tracks. I'm going to put out, you know, 30 pieces of art and I'm going to notice which ones people are buying or engaging with and I'm going to make more stuff like that. It's I just naturally, I will want to make more stuff like that. Now, their artists are a little different because they might feel like, oh, people are buying that. Oh, I'm a sell. I don't want to be a sellout. I'm going to make stuff people don't buy. And that's, that's a whole separate issue. <laughs> but, but for most of us who are service providers, we will naturally gravitate towards the stuff people are buying from us or reacting from us, uh, the, for re reacting based on what we put out there. And we're going to just do more of that. So do not, do not feel you have to niche yourself. Your website can be the broadest thing in the world. Really, really. Your homepage can just be so broad. It can just be about values. I believe in love. I believe in, in, in integrity. That's all your website has to say. Your homepage. Your about page can talk about your 25 different certifications and, and the, your five favorite certifications were these, but the other 20 also, great. Your about page can be as broad. And then you have on your website, 
each page for your 25 offers. You're a life coach. Well, can you coach people who are retired? Okay, good. Are you going to niche yourself as I'm a life coach for retirees? You don't have to. I mean, unless you want to, you can niche yourself if you want, by the way. I'm just talking to the people who have a hard time with that, like myself. You can niche yourself all day long. You could do that if you want to. If it's successful for you, if it energizes you, if you love it, please do it. Please do it. But if you don't love it, if you just can't do it, then don't and allow yourself to be that flexible. So like, it's like I said, as a, as a, say I'm a life coach. And I'm saying, but George, I, 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 I would be happy to coach retirees. But I'm also, I also love working with teenagers. How can I put that in under one business? Why not? Your homepage could say, I love helping people um, love their life because they're on purpose or whatever. It can be as generic and as broad as you want. Please do not be all limiting thought and go, oh, I can't be this generic, can't be this broad. Why not? Why the heck not? Let me tell you why, okay? Because your credibility should not come from your homepage. You should not have this weird idea that, okay, my, my homepage, if it doesn't make someone fall in love with me and want to buy from me right away, then it's a fail. No. Who does that? Who goes to a homepage and go, oh my God, I got to hire this person. I don't even know what this is. Good. Yeah, it's occasionally happens. It's rare, but you'll, you'll eventually get there. But what's more likely to happen is people are coming to your website to confirm what they heard about you. The retiree told their friends that you're a great coach for them. And so they said, oh, okay, I'm going to go to their website. They'll go look at, look, look around and your home, your home page is very generic. says, I believe in love <laughs> or whatever. But they're not going to stop there because they told their, their friend told them about you or they saw a post from you or they watched a couple videos from you and say, this person, I love this person's energy signature. I want to see what this person, they go to your website. Oh, I believe in love. Okay, well, wonderful. And I believe in that too. Okay, let me keep, keep surfing. There's a person who's going to be like, go to your homepage. It's so generic and uh, it's too generic. That's not the person for you. That's good. If that person's that impatient with your homepage, no matter how generic it is, it's not your ideal client. It's probably not even your potential client. They're just not meant for you. Let them go on. The person who is your potential client will spend more than 30 seconds on your website. Okay, they're, they're going to say, oh, generic homepage, but let me keep going because I, I somehow feel like this person could help me. I believe in love. Great. Okay. All right. Let me keep going. What are your services? Oh, your life coaching can do retirees who are, who are wanting to rekindle love with their partner. Oh, wonderful. Oh, you have another package for retirees who are looking for you know, purpose after their corporate career. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Oh, you have you also help teenagers because I've got teenage grandson who could use your help. Wonderful. That they, they're not going to go. Mm, I don't know about this person. They could coach both retirees and teenagers. Goodbye. No, they're not going to do that. If they heard about you from somebody, or they read one of your content, or they watched some videos, they're going to go. Oh, that's interesting. Well, let me let me talk. Let me read a few blog posts of theirs. Oh, yes, it's confirmation that this person knows what they're talking about. At least serving me, or serving my grandson, or whatever it may be. That's how it works for the for your ideal client. You, you stop thinking about the person who's like so skeptical and like I'm only going to spend three seconds on your website. Nobody does that who is actually going to end up hiring you. So don't niche yourself if you don't want to, but do niche, your, do niche your offers. You have 25 different, you're a life coach, you can serve 25 different people, put them all as separate pages on your site. Now, I'm, I say 25, that's a little, little extreme. I mean, most of you aren't gonna have 25. Most of you, most of you probably will have five though, right? Like you, can, you could serve five different situations or you could serve 10 different situations. List them all there. And let them go and explore themselves. They're going to scroll past the ones that don't aren't relevant, and they're going to go into and study the ones that are relevant. Now, remember, it's remember again. The person who is is want is meant to work with you isn't going to be impatient with your website. No, they're not. They're going to be patient with it, and they probably got there because they heard about you or saw your content. That's why they're going to be patient. They're not just randomly Googling and go, eh, don't know who this person is, but I'm going to 
nobody does. I mean, if they randomly Google, they'll probably land on an article on your site. And they're because they're, 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 they have a particular issue or a particular interest and they land on an article on your website or a video on your website, they'll read the article or watch the video. And by that point, they already get your energy signature and then they'll be patient with you. So <laughs> don't have to niche yourself. Be as freaking broad as you want on your website, on your social media, and then niche your offers. Test many different offers, just like an artist would test, test many different works of art. Musician would test many different tracks. A, um, a, a, a an, an author will publish many different books to see which one is the bestseller. Oh, that one's okay. Let me write more about that. A course creator like myself, launch a bunch of different courses. A coach offers a bunch of different service packages or service subscriptions or, or coaching services and see which one sells and then lean more into that. If you are niching yourself and you don't feel right, that's, there's a reason why, because your soul is saying, mm, not, it's not authentic. It's not an authentic business if I don't allow myself to test. And not only is it not an authentic business, it's an ineffective business because you're not allowing yourself to lean into the areas of real interest for you and go, I think I can serve in that capacity because of my experience or because of my studies or because of my, you know, the ways I've helped people allow yourself to test. Cause otherwise, how do you know what sells? You will never know unless you test it out. I hope this is helpful and thank you for watching and uh, being patient with me as I figure out what to do when I grow up. <laughs> All of us are right. And it's okay. We can now keep growing up and offering everything that we are interested in and seeing what people resonate with. Well, thanks again, and I look forward to seeing any comments you want to add below.